very accurate, very helpful. Not all hymns have great theology. I'd like to rewrite a lot of them. Some of them we just can't use. But this one is right on. And it's interesting to me that it was one of my father's favorites late in his life. Pardon for sin. And a peace that endures. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. These blessings are on. And 10,000 more. God is faithful with new mercies every morning. This is not the image of God out there in the world. Out there in the world, I can tell you from long experience of being out in other churches, over a thousand of them during my ten years of television, over a thousand churches. And I remember talking to them and so many times, asking them for their image of God. And for their image of Jesus, they were totally different. They loved Jesus, and they were scared and silly of God. Because their image of God was dominated by tradition. And we've been questioning those traditions, not because we don't like them, but because the Bible is against them. And as we study the Bible, we find that the traditions of contemporary Conservative theology need readjusting. The traditions of evangelical theology are not very evangelical because the word evangelical means full of good news. <clears throat> Last week we talked about one of the three omnis because one of the things that they all say, oh well, God is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. And all of those need to be questioned when you do your Bible study and find that they're, first of all, none of the words are in the Bible. And they're just not true. And last week we saw why omnipresent is wrong and why it's dangerous. It's wrong because the Bible says it's wrong. And it's dangerous because it just cuts the heart out of the of the love which is shown by the incarnation. God is not everywhere, and he didn't have to be here at all, but he came. And the incarnation, God came to save us. He has a throne. His throne is in the heavens, earth is his footstool. But he came. He came to save us. Today we're looking at omniscience. Omniscience is tied to another way of speaking about it, which is foreknowledge. Omniscience means God knows everything. And by everything, they mean everything. Everything past, everything present, everything future, He knows it all. If you know anything at all about theology, you know that there was a dispute long ago between the Calvinists and the Arminians. But there was one thing they both agreed on. That is that God knows everything. Everything that's going to happen in advance. Well, let me read you a story from Second Kings, chapter 20. In those days, Hezekiah fell ill. And he wasn't the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, Put your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not live. Prophecy. I say the prophet. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed. 
addressing this prayer to the Lord. Oh, Lord, remember, I beg you, how I have behaved faithfully and with sincerity of heart in your presence, and have done what is right in your eyes. And as I have said many times, Isaiah had not left the little corner before the word of the Lord came to him. Go back. And say to Hezekiah, Prince of my people, the Lord, the God of David, your ancestor, says this, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will cure you. In three days' time you shall go up to the temple of the Lord, and I will add fifteen years to your life. I will save you and this city from the hands of the king of Assyria. I will protect this city for my own sake, for the sake of my servant David. Bring a big poultice, Isaiah said. They brought one, applied it to the elder, and the king recovered. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, What is the sign to tell me that the Lord will cure me and that I will be going up to the temple of the Lord in three days? Here, Isaiah replied, is the sign from the Lord that he will do what he has said. Would you like the shadow to go forward ten steps or to go back ten steps? Oh, it's easy for the shadow to lengthen ten steps, Hezekiah answered. No, I'd like the shadow to go back ten steps. The prophet Isaiah then called on the Lord and made the shadow go back ten steps on the steps of the house. How do you like that? Do you like that? Amen. If you were sick, would you like that? If you had a sundial in your house and you know the shadow was always going this way, you asked God, well, make the shadow go back. Now, did God lie to Hezekiah when he said, you will die, you will not live? Help me now. Work with me, people. No, God doesn't lie, does he? Then Hezekiah prayed, and God said, what did God say? Well, I always knew all the time that you weren't going to die. I've known this was the foundation of the earth. No, he said, go tell him that I've heard his prayer and I've seen his fear. 